Glen Torren were the last side from the IFA Premiership to qualify for the Satanta Sports Cup final in 2008. So it's out that their resplendent Oval Stadium should be host for the next decider to be played up north since then as Crusaders and Derry City by respectively for their first ever Satanta Sports Cup and All-Ireland titles. Cruz needed an extra time penalty from captain Colin Coates to make it. Derry's 3-0 away leg win over Shamrock Rovers was sufficient, though they did fall 2-0 in the second leg at the Brandywell. Derry City having made it out of their second semi-final. Crusaders, it was beginner's luck in a way, their first season in the top four. Managing to get through in an epic and uh, one of the great games against Liga Rovers a fortnight ago. As for Derry City, their 18th game of 2012, and for their new manager, Declan Devine, his first final as a manager. Stephen Baxter for Crusaders has been here many, many times before. A sunshine day in East Belfast and the handshakes to begin. Milo Corcoran, the head of the Satanta Sports Cup committee, along with Colin Morgan, the chief executive of Satanta Sports. And Felix Healy, the butterflies will be flying. They always do at this time on Cup Final Day. Well, I'm almost nervous myself. Well, I hope the uh, people watching at home get a sense of uh, the atmosphere that's in the grounds. Tremendous noise that sometimes you don't get on your TV screens. And it's a fantastic day. And there's young Rowan Coates, the mascot today for Crusaders, being held aloft by his father, the captain of Crusaders, Colin Coates, whose penalty in extra time at the showgrounds has brought us here. And this battle for this wonderful trophy. Well, Rory Higgins, five times a League Cup winner with Derry City. And let's check the sides for this 2012 Satanta Sports Cup final. Two changes to the 11 that we've become accustomed to seeing from Crusaders' semi-final ties against Sligo Rovers and last week's Irish Cup final against Linfield. Right back, Gareth McKeown is out. 2008 runner-up with Glen and Paul Lehman comes into the back four. Dave McMaster is replaced in midfield by Aidan Watson, McMaster on the bench. McKeown's absence means Dave McGowan moves to right back with Lehman partnering semi-final penalty king Colin Coates in the centre of defence. David Rainey is top scorer with 20 goals this season, but second highest scorer Jordan Owens is out with the ankle injury picked up in the Irish Cup final. Injury problems for Derry. Kevin Deary dislocated a kneecap midweek and joins the injury victim Stuart Grecian and hamstring worry Mark Farron in missing the final. There is good news for the Candy Stripes though. Rory Patterson and Patrick McElhenney have recovered from injury and both start. Owen Morrison has been cleared for the bench. Eight different players have netted for Derry in the competition. Among their 14 goals, Patterson scoring four after lighting up Northern Irish football in his cold rain days, which earned him a move here to the Oval. Of Derry squad, only Simon Madden has played in a final before, a losing one last year for Dundalk. Well, a wonderful scene. Raymond Crangle is our match referee for the 2012 Satanta Sports Cup final. The assistants are Eamon Shanks on the far side, Andrew Neeson on the near, and the fourth official will be Colin Burns. Well, it's a unique fixture, and both camps have admitted, Felix, they don't know a huge amount about each other, which means it will be a step into the unknown for both and might just make it a lot more entertaining. I think they're just playing games. Well, to be honest, I think they know quite a bit about each other. You know, only 70 miles of the road, and it's quite a lot of TV coverage exposure at times. You know, quite a bit. Derry looked very solid today, despite all the injuries that they have. It's a really solid looking team. Obviously, Christian being out has been a blow for them. But right across the back today, I think they'll be decent. You know, Madden, McElhinney, and McBride in particular. Caffer is still relatively new to the, the Derry setup. But the four across the middle, McElhinney and McLaughlin White and Malloy and Higgins, they're decent. Today is a sunshine day in Belfast. Perfect weather for what we hope will be a perfect cup final. 
the first for the Oval. Glentoran reached one final. Northern Ireland's only had one winner in 2005. Crusaders aiming to double that. We're underway for the seventh Satanta Sports Cup All-Ireland final. The 30th All-Ireland football decider dating back to 1921. We've had 16 winners from the League of Ireland, 14 from the Irish League. So Colin Coates making his way forward already. Free kick from Borrow. It's a good chest down by Adamson in towards the middle, but away by Roy Patterson, who used to play his football here for Glen Torrent. Towards Adamson, who did well. It's a, beginning to be a blustery old afternoon here. Malloy got the touch away. And he's hit this one long. Roy Patterson on the break. It needed an important interception by Stephen McBride, his 11th season with the club, to flick it away. And used to the big occasion. Well, that wasn't the worst ball in the world. You like to see the ball sits up and, and goes to the side with a spin on it. I have to say, well, the pitch isn't the best at this minute in time. You know, it's the end of a long season here. It does have its advantages for Crusaders. It's often been put forward as one of the reasons why Crusaders are only the fourth finalist from the IFA Premiership out of the 14 that have reached the Tanta Sports Cup Finals. But the past three, four weeks, with the league title gone, Stephen Baxter, the cruise manager, has been able to concentrate on the cup competitions, the victory over Sligo Rovers across two legs in the Satanta Sports Cup and the Irish Cup Final, which they were beaten at Winter Park last week by four goals to one. Well, he was in the great position, Will, for the second league of Sligo. Well, he was able to rest, basically, the entire team that weekend. But I have to say, well, the, the pitch isn't as good as it maybe looks on your TV screens. I was walking earlier. I have to say from here, it looks very green. Yeah, a lot of players out there, speaking to a few of them, were not that happy with the pitch. But to be fair to Glen Torn, they only knew they were holding this, hosting the final a couple of weeks ago. And it is at the end of the season. This is always a very difficult time, Will, for players at the start of any cup final. There doesn't be any real pattern for the first 10, 15 minutes. And it's usually 15, 20 minutes before it starts to start to settle down. Well, Stephen Baxter, the 1997 Footballer of the Year, has got two successes to take advantage of in the form of... Stuart Dallas, who won the honour last season, and uh, Chris Morrow, who this week was voted the Northern Ireland Football Writers Footballer of the Year for 2012. Both Morrow and the Crusaders goalkeeper Sean O'Neill have been selected by David Jeffrey for the Irish League to play Manchester United at Windsor Park on Tuesday night, which we're told is close to a sellout. Well, there's a bit of a surprise, Will, with Crusaders. Expected Adamson to play up front with Rainey, but Adamson's actually playing wide right. And they're basically playing with, with three in the middle of the park. It's unusual to what we're used to seeing with Crusaders. It's a 4-5-1 formation. Adamson pushing back alongside Cadell on the right. Rainey on his own up front, who's been the A scorer in chief as usual for the crews this season. This their 57th match of the campaign, and we're at the first back at the start of July against Fulham in the Europa League. It's a guy in your picture there, Will, for uh, viewers down south. It's a guy who's just, well, that's Declan Devine, but the player we saw there, Morrow, the guy who did exception well at Sligo. He's a guy that's just won the Player of the Year up here. And uh, his runs are going to have to be picked off. It's a chance here. There's a run inside here, but it's a very good save by Doherty. It's been whipped back in again by Morrow, but what an opportunity. Anderson holding his head in his hands. It was a big opening, a great chance for the opening goal in the cup final. Yeah, it's one of those, a decent save from Jared Doherty. Adamson smacks it, ends up coming inside. Doesn't really get, get too tight. We're tight enough to him. I think it's one or two arguments come on the Derry defence following with this. He's done well to hit the target. You know, young Caffrey's got to get closer than that. Can't give players of any calibre that kind of space in the, in the box. And it's a glorious ball through, Cadell trying to force his way past McBride. And both went down, but there was no whistle. And Simon Madden, who, by virtue of scoring against Linfield in the quarter-final second leg, netted his first ever senior goal in football, which is quite a feat at the age of 24. O'Neill. 
done by Moro Crusaders, normally the home side for this final, which is why Derry have changed from their normal red and white stripes. Foul by Aidan Watson, the former Northern Ireland's under-19 international. Two goals so far this season, but still drafted into the side today, along with Paul Lehman, who's been there and done that in his mid-30s now. I think he's probably played in the in the year down in Cork. Probably, probably played for Glentorn that night, the night that uh, Cork won the Satanta. He did indeed, won 23 trophies during his time at Glentorn. Would have been 24, but for Alan Matthews and company. One of the great nights of Cork football. They're back in the top flight again, as are Derry after a little spell away. Back tilting for trophies again, having lifted the League Cup. Halloween down at Turner's Cross, their 10th and the 5th we've seen live in the past seven seasons. Dell did well, has support alongside from Rainey, but interception coming from Patrick McElhenney, the former Sunderland playmaker. Kotsu's penalty brought Crusaders to this final for the first time with the effect of clearance, and he was fantastic throughout that second leg at the showgrounds. Yeah, he's a guy that leads by example, Will. A very powerful looking guy, inspires people around him. He's a leader. Some you obviously need in teams. I think at times the one worry I have is in the last couple of games I've seen them it sometimes drops off far too deep at times and allows a fair bit of space in front for people to exploit. And Limphy did that last week and uh, Sligo did it and should have made more of it on this, in the showgrounds. But the guys who play in the midfield, Cadell and Morrow, that guy there we're just talking about, he makes incredible runs. But the guy who plays beside them as well, Cadell, he's a terrific player as well and works incredibly hard. All trying to impress the new Northern Ireland manager, Michael O'Neill, who is here. Forward by Coates, delivery was good, but the just needed more men to aim for in the area. Morrow moved his way up, but couldn't connect properly. A quick chat with uh, Mickey O'Neill beforehand, and uh, I think he's like everybody else, but a bit surprised at the result from the Sligo Showgrounds today as well. Still no goals yet in the match of the day. Nil-nil. McDade. Easily mopped up by Coates. Whose goal in the Irish Cup final last week against Linfield at Windsor was the 101st they've scored in all competitions this season. Just ran away from Morrow. It's a talented squad that Stephen Baxter's been able to build. They are now competing for trophies. And even though the league title race didn't go their way this season as they were off the pace, they've won the League Cup up north and they have a free kick for a foul and their top scorer, David Rainey. Yeah, 36 years young. I think he's just caught Ryan McBride there. There was a, quite a, a gap between Madden and McBride and Rainey made a very good run. But that, that move all came from about from young Caffrey at left back, not getting tight enough to Adamson again. And Crusaders were able to build on that. And that's a couple of times that Caffrey hasn't been close enough to people. Chris Morrow and Stephen McBride are the two over this, looking to test Gerard Doherty and more. Morrow curls it, great delivery off the post. Doherty beaten and Derry have survived. But the whistle's gone, they've got a free kick away. Crusaders so close through out and out the player of the season up north Chris Morrow what a delivery yeah it's a decent free kick well it seems to hang in the air for ages for ages Jared Doherty just gets a hand to it I think really decent hands good feet and got a cross and just that little touch pushed it onto the post but there's no doubt well the emphasis impetus at the minute is with Crusaders they've started the better side
Not back by Morrow, trying to locate Dallas, his fellow Northern Ireland footballer of the year. Dallas slid right in, and it's and the attention of Raymond Crangle, the cup final referee. Well, I think he's right to have a war with young Dallas here. It's not the best challenge in the world. Now there he goes, you know, you've seen those been penalised in the Premier League all year. He's very fortunate not to get a yellow card. McDay did his best but couldn't keep it in. Well, he netted in the away leg of the quarterfinals at Windsor Park at Linfield, his only ever goal in this competition, but it was such a crucial one. It's a guy that we need to, Derry need to see a lot more on the ball today. He's a guy that can make them tick. We talked all along about the ability that he has. We need to see him on the ball, but Derry haven't been able to get, get passes and get any kind of fluid, fluency at all at this moment in time. And every season that Patrick McElhenney has been with Derry City, he's won a trophy. First division in 2010, the League Cup last season. Will really have his trophy winning wrapped up by May this year. McElhenney is waiting in the middle, good support from McDade, and it's cut out very well by Eden Watson. Got in the way for the first quarter kick of this cup final, and it's for Derry City at the airport end. Well, Derry, as usual, always spent a lot of time on set pieces. That was good play from David McDade, actually, not Mike McGowan. Uh, McGowan, to be fair, did well to get back. But this will be a tester. This will be a tester, particularly McElhenney standing in front of the goalkeeper. Six to aim for it, swung in really well. Up went McBride, didn't get their chance on the turn. Keeper couldn't get there, O'Neill was isolated. McDade didn't get the chance to connect. And in by Patterson, but very easily cleared away in the end by McGowan. But Derry with the chance of a, a second win in this attack. Curled by McDade, and that's a goal kick. Derry finally putting some pressure on. Well, it's a set piece like that that can ignite you, will get you going. Again, it's all kinds of problems here. The ball is flicked on by Shane McElhinney, and the book, David McDade's waiting for it to come down. It just won't come down. But it's good defender, I think, by Watson. He just gets a toe poke in. by McBride, but not straightforward. Throw will be by Madden. Former both sides has wobbled of late. Derry have scored no victories in the last four, two wins in the last nine. If you look back longer, they've only lost five of the last 17 games. What we said is, have only won two of the last seven, but lost three of the last 12. Lots of draws there. The season's been very disruptive, Well, a lot of, uh, listen, a lot of Derry supporters, they don't see where they're going to score a lot of goals, they haven't scored too many recently. There was a big shout of handball which wasn't given against McCaffrey by referee Raymond Krangle. The referee did the Irish Cup final last week, Will, thought he handled that really, really well. A decent game until Linfield started scoring towards the end. Mercedes got themselves back into the game after conceding a couple of first half goals. The effort by Coates, who else, to get them back into it. He's been the man for the big cup occasion in recent weeks. But then Linfield uh, powered through to complete yet another double. their 51st league title. Big opening down the wing here. Opportunities for Addison to try and keep it in play. He'd rainy and Dallas waiting in the middle. Flags flag and flag and free And the flag's up. He's flagging Mercedes for a free kick. He'll have a free kick here. He's flagging for a free kick, referee. But again, Stephen McLaughlin, the ball's been played up to him. He's miscontrolled it. I think the line turns flagging for, a, for an infringement just about 10 yards further down the pitch. And all the big guns are up again, Coates from Lehman from the back. Well, 
Well, Stephen Baxter's men had a light build up today to this cup final. They'll try and keep their confidence up after losing the Irish Cup final last week. Not much penetration from the free kick from Stuart Dallas. This is McBride. Cross from Mora. McGowan, decent ball. Cadell will chase, but it's too far. And Gerard Doherty. It's a chance here, Will. Sends it long upfield. Well, it was temporarily two on one, but suddenly the cavalry came back. But it's finding the right men. And the final effort from Higgins. A might disappointing. It's the one thing about when Derry break. Do a good run on us like a McLaughlin there was well spotted by Gerard Doherty. It's like I said, decent kick out from a goalkeeper. And we'll see it here. Ball sits up nice, plays it first time to David McDaid. And the ball, you know, it's been a lot of ball today, regular bounces all over the pitch, and that's to do with the pitch, Will. It is very bobbly out there, as I keep saying. It's not, it's not as good as it looks on your TV screens. On by Watson, it's a good ball. Here goes Cadell, the flag has stayed down. Rainey waiting in the middle, but aimed too close to Doherty. Otherwise... David Rainey was in to add to his impressive haul this season. That was a good run from Cadell there. He's very like his centre midfield partner. It's the kind of runs that Morrow makes. Cadell's making another break inside, but Darty's at the bounce go his way. So effective as he made his way further upfield uh, against Linfield in the home second leg in the quarterfinals. Now beginning to do the same here. Simon the Madden's done really well for Jerry since he come. Well, a lot of goals have come from his crosses actually. By Patrick McElhenney, but it'll be knocked up by Coates. And it runs through towards O'Neill. It's a bit of an injury problem for David Rainey up at the other end. Who stretched for that dramatic ball in across by Dallas a few moments ago. Cadell with his recent runs uh, beginning to rip a few seams in the Derry back four, which Declan Devine, a former goalkeeper, looking to mop up. Who won the cup here with Glen Torin in 1996. They'd be a wee bit happy with the last 10 minutes, Will. They didn't start the game. <laughs> Stephen Baxter, both him and Declan Devine had a job to do. You know, it's never easy losing the cup final 4-1. You know, confidence is you know, the whole build-up of, of an Irish Cup final day. And he's had a job to do this week. And I have to say his team started out quite well. Rainey! Sent it over the top. The Crusaders have had the brighter start to this cup final. Again, there's too much room there, Will. You know, Barry Malloy and, and Shane McLennie in the background there. They've got to get a wee bit tighter to Cadell and Rainey. I mean, he's been a revelation for, for Crusaders, David Rainey. He's 36 years of age. Uh, Stephen Baxter told me yesterday when I visited him at his sports shop in Newton Ards that he was Looking for it to be a more comfortable build-up to the Cup Final today. Irish Cup Final, they were suited and booted. They met at a local hotel in the morning, had a meal together. But last night, they slept in their own beds. They made their own individual way to the ground at around 2 o'clock, and both clubs agreed that it would be a tracksuit Cup Final. The Crusaders are showing their fluidity so far. Well, Jerry Lads appealing for a free kick. I thought there was a high foot from, from Lehman. I think it's there. It's actually Coat. I think they might have had a kiss as well. It's an easy head out by Shane McElhenney and back by McBride. in the air, Rainey 
Hasn't been terribly isolated up front, but he didn't realise where the ball is. It's being brought on by Cadell here. It's a decent ball out wide for Dallas, but just too wide. And Rainey, even though he is the one in the 4-5 one, is in the opening 20 minutes at least getting good supply. Well, he was a free kick there, and to be fair to the referee, played a good advantage. Not the kind of ball there, Will, that needs to stick. It's not sticking for Derry. Steve McLaughlin's lost possession again. No, Patterson hasn't been able to hold it up either. They can't get any, any kind of continuity on the pitch at all. It's got a stick when it goes up, but you can see Steve McLaughlin's very angry with himself. His touch wasn't the best there. They've won 20 major trophies in their history. Uh, Crusaders, Derry naming 25, including the Irish News Cup, which is the only North-South trophy that they've claimed. Huge crowd at the Oval today. The main stand just about full where we're situated, along the right-hand side where the dignitaries are, the Northern Ireland manager, Michael O'Neill. A few politicians about the place today as well, Will. I actually think Martin McGuinness is standing closer to me than you are. Foul on Rainey. The challenge by Simon Madden. And Crusaders have had a few decent dead ball opportunities here. It's one of those he doesn't need. You know, he's just, he's just been caught by the trickier of Rainey, but Simon Madden's more experienced, too experienced to be caught like that. Sent in by McBride, plenty looking for it, including Adamson, didn't get there. Dallas dispossessed, McDade with a chance to break. It's two on two here, but McDade's first touch was too strong. But there's still support on this near side from Madden. Got the final touch and it's a Crusaders throw, but something's got to give. Both defences are being well tested here. Can't be too far away from the opening goal. Well, there's been a wee bit more quality going forward from Crusaders than there has been from, from Derry at this moment in time. You know, Patterson hasn't really got into the game at all. Stephen McLaughlin, is, as we, we talked about, it, he's actually gone off the boil the last three or four weeks. Whereas the likes of Rainey, Cadell and, and Morrow, you know, they're getting more out of Crusaders, are getting more out of them, as we can Rainey, see here. Rainey, Cadell, Rainey. One, two, which was too frenetic, and they put each other out in the end. Tempo is definitely being pushed by Crusaders when they get into the Derry half. See, that's the problem with Rory Patterson there. Everybody talks about his temperament. It's the chance at the other end. Clever flick from David Rainey. And it's just come behind Cadell. Couldn't get control of the ball. But at the other end, Rory Patterson's one of those guys, you know, he spends too much time talking to people and arguing with people. And he is. His temperament is suspect. But he is a guy that can produce something out of nothing. Dermot McCaffrey's throw for McDade. Higgins just sort of looked as if they'd run out of luck in this move. Stolen by McLaughlin. But Crusaders have the free kick and the Derry fans in the far stand, the one that backs onto the railway line to Bangor. They're somewhat displeased. Challenge coming in from Aidan Watson. I think the referee's blown early for a free kick there. Didn't seem to be too much in it. I think Stephen McLaughlin's actually pulled Watson, but after the referee's blown the whistle. Proper Watson's cup final weather. Yeah. Derry fans are in the what you might call the city oak, end away to our left hand side. Backing onto the old Haaland and Wolf Cranes. Cross by Cadell for Dallas, but no joy this time. The Crusaders fans are in the main stand here and also the goal away to our right hand side where the uh, runway of George Best Airport is. Barely a spare seat in the main crowd in the uh, main stand here. Great to see Will. Great to see a big, big crowd today, great atmosphere. And we'll wave. We're just on the left of picture. <laughs> I'll let you wave on your own. As 
but not much reason for flag waving yet in this decider midway through the first half. And the competition you feel that holds huge importance, not just to Crusaders, but for all of Northern Ireland football. They won the first title in 2005 with Linfield. They've had two finals since, but they've both been beaten. It's an awful lot of coverage. The sports bulletins on TV and radio across the two national networks up here. They generally tend to lead their sports bulletins with the Satanta Sports Cup. Newspapers, the Telegraph, the Newsletter, the uh, Irish News, the Derry Journal always have it right across the back page. It has a high priority up here, but the success rate has not matched. Has it changed today? McDay lost out by David McGowan. Higgins, good layoff. Derry free kick, not a bad position either. Declan Goodell coming into the back, the former Hearts youth. And they've got a big Edinburgh derby to think about. Uh, their own cup final shortly. Yeah, it's just two actions there, Will. An easy free kick for the referee. Doesn't get the ball at all. You know, McElhenney's just about to play. I think it's Simon Cadden down. Let's see what McElhenney's going to do here. We've seen him do this at Tally earlier this year, Will. He is very capable from this distance. Well, he had a strong wind behind him that day. There's occasional gusts today, but not as protracted. But surely he's tempted. McElhenney had a low drive inside. There were six in the area waiting for it. Turned effort by McLaughlin. Derry are finally creating a couple of chances, but haven't been able to test Sean O'Neill and the Crusaders' goal just yet. Yeah, it wasn't the best free kick from young McElhenney. He ends up with David McDade. Stephen McLaughlin's trying to curl us. I think he's trying, it's, you know, he's only got one thing on his mind once he gets the ball. He's trying to curl it to the far post. I think it'd be better just knocking it into the back post because there were a lot of bodies up there at the back post. Declan Devine appealing a free kick which would belatedly come. Very quickly taken. Madden almost picked out, but it was well anticipated by Stuart Dallas. A man in whom there's been considerable interest in England the past few seasons. Blackpool showed interest first, but they've been beaten to the punch now. It's a couple of times now we've seen Rory Higgins getting involved. He is a guy that's got a lot of ability and never shows it often enough. A lot of space for David McDade here. Malloy played it through to McDade in a lot of space, but he couldn't keep it down. Decent goal scoring run of late. He's netted four goals this season in their 17 games. That's what I talked about before, Will, about the times that we're calling coaches too deep. You know, as a back four, they're far too deep. There's too much room between them and the midfield four. We talked about it at Sligo. Sligo didn't make enough of it at the showgrounds the other night. But sometimes there is far too much space in front of the back four. But Derry need better service. How's about that for service? Chance for McDay to slip in. He's found Patterson! Couldn't keep it on target. Corner kick it'll be. The deflection crucial to deny Rory Patterson his seventh goal this year. Better play from the county stripes. And the ball's held off. David McDade's involved again. And it's actually a good block by Paul Lehman. This looks as if it's going to test the goalkeeper. Derry have had the last four chances in the game across the last 15 minutes. The Staders started brightly but are beginning to be pushed back into their own third. Solid head away by McBride with support from the veteran Paul Lehman. And it doesn't matter who you play for, if you've got his stature, his quality, you'll always win medals. He's done that this season with Crusaders in winning the League Cup. It was actually a very good corner from Caffrey. Very surprised that Derry didn't have players in that particular area. They expect this one to be on the money as well from young McElhinney. McElhinney curls it in, 6 to aim for, and he found McLaughlin. This time it's a goal kick. Finally some pressure from the Candy Stripes. 
Yeah, Paul Lehman did really well here. Kept going with the runner and got the block on. I think he's actually headed it against Stephen McLaughlin is going for it. This is the corner I'm talking about. Well, that's in a great position. Shumley should be attacking that at the back post. You know, David McDade even, even though he's he's probably the smallest player on the Derry side, he should be attacking that. But I expect Derry to be stronger the longer the game goes on here. Well, you know, they are basically full-time, full-time athletes. You know, they train six, seven sessions a week. McBride sets it up, but it was well defended. Two McBrides on the pitch. Stephen for Crusaders at left back. Ryan in the centre of defence for Derry. I think he's been watching too much television, young McBride. It's not the best dive I've ever seen. Rory Patterson's got to be doing better than that. Well, you know, that's... Watson long for Morrow, who did very well to win one challenge and then a second. And he still managed to get the cross in. That was superb creativity by Morrow. You can see why he's the player of the year. Sent back in by Stephen McBride. Appeals from Morrow have not been heeded. Scored the winning goal in the League Cup final over Coleraine earlier in the season. Yeah, it was one of those runs from midfield. Will gets beyond the front players. Screaming for it in the middle is Rory Patterson. Didn't get there. Coates cut off the supply path. Anticipates very well, does Colin Coates, the Crusaders captain. By McCaffrey. been quite a while, 15 minutes or so, since Crusaders have had their last solid opportunity in the game, but they always look difficult and dangerous when they're in the final third. What a glorious opportunity. Cadell waiting in the middle, claimed by Rainey, and he thought he had Doherty off his line, but he just couldn't get it on target. Very well won by Rainey. Yeah, well, Barney Malloy's given John McElhinney an absolute rollicking off camera. And rightly so, he should have dealt with that as a defender instead of trying to play. David Rainey's taking the, the wrong option. You know, Cadell was free as a bird, the centre of the centre of the goal. Free kick for the foul on Stephen McLaughlin. What's well, actually a better touch from Stephen McLaughlin? McGowan, who's, who's more a centre back. This, you know, it's an easy free kick for the referee to give. But it's better play, it's better touch from Stephen McLaughlin. David McGowan moved to right back due to Mark Gareth McKeown not starting this cup final. He is on the bench, but the shifting around with Paul Lehman coming into the centre of defence and McGowan not playing his usual centre back role suggests that it's an injury more than anything else for McKeown. No. Crusaders in the first half last week down the right hand side were very, very poor defensively. Young McMaster in particular. And uh, Stephen Baxter was less than happy. It was a brave decision to hook two players at half time. Brave decision. Well played by McDade. Crusaders ball, so Devine was appealing immediately on the touchline. Nil-nil, but it's been such a good open game, fine attacking from both sides. Forward by Morrow, aimed for Cadell. Wind's beginning to pick up again, which you might just be able to see in the flags on the far side in the terrace, among the Derry support. You feel that it's sweeping across the main stand. McBride. Coates. And down the middle, Rainey went up, got a touch, but not a directed one. Madden got long. You win an instant there, Will. 
that bit of play all start off for Rory Higgins giving the ball away. He's actually inside his own box behind the entire back four. You now, if you do that, then the ball's got to be right. There's extra bite coming in the challenges now. That one by Dallas. Just being told to count down a little by referee Raymond Crangle. Went for it, got uh, quite a bit of Patrick McElhenney too, who is still down after this. I think the referee's been very reluctant to show a card today, you know, because of the final. On another day, that would be the yellow card as well. by Shane McElhaney, who's spotted Madden free on this near side. It's a good call, Dallas with him. And they've both gone down. And this is going to be the first booking of the cup final. And it's going to go against Stuart Dallas, last season's player of the year. Referee Free must kick, good position for Derry here. Referee must have heard me, Will. I think that was an easy decision. And the linesman standing five yards away, and he doesn't flag for it. It's the end of his second season with Crusaders, and he has really made an impact, this 21-year-old. He's the first to go into the book in this 2012 Satanta Sports Cup final. It's usually great delivery from McLaughlin in these kind of situations. It's a two-man wall he's facing, six waiting for it in the area, another waiting outside of McElhenney. McLaughlin's curl, played by Sean O'Neill, was comfortable. Just catch it, practice will. Very poor delivery. After your great build up and all. And same towards Dallas, and he was always looking second best behind Ryan McBride. Coates gave it away. Patterson was almost in, but the trajectory just screwed away from him, and it was very fortunate for Crusader's point of view. They've sent it forward towards Rainey, but it's a rare offside. Rory Patterson was given off again about the ball that was up to him, but we honestly should have headed it. Should have headed the ball. He hasn't done that enough. Was hit halfway between Simon Madden and Rory Patterson. Paul Lehman, who played in this final in uh, 2008, beaten by Cork City, the only member of the Crusaders squad who's featured in a Satanta Sports Cup final before today. Similar with Derry, only Simon Madden, who played in last year's final, and like Lehman, was on the losing side with Dundalk as they. Fell 2-0 to Shamrock Rovers. <laughs> On by Rainey. Space here. Morrow. Oh, he snatched at it. He would a bit more space. And there's going to be a yellow card here for the foul on Rainey. And Barry Malloy, the cup final captain, is in the book. Well, again, it's good uh, advantage played by the referee. That's not the best shot in the world from, from young Morrow. Just cuts right across this. That's can only imagine, maybe he thought it was going to be a free kick after this. Well, I think Barry Malloy was, was, was maybe... I think he was complaining that it was actually Rainey run into him. That's a push the referees missed that. A decent final so far for Raymond Crangle, all the same. McElhinney kept it in, and the final touch was off him, directed out by Stephen McBride. And it's a difficult trophy to win, even harder to retain. 
I'm sure Damien Lynch knows the answer to the only side who's managed to achieve that. On this day, 12th of May, five years ago, draw to United beating Linfield on penalties at Windsor Park. Torren, from a Northern Ireland perspective, have reached the final since until today. Rory Patterson cut down the angle for Sean O'Neill to clear away. Caffrey. By Malloy. Good swift play. Patterson, excellent delivery, but the final shot again screwed away. Best move of the game, Will. Best move of the... You know, good pace about that. Good one-touch stuff. Unfortunately, the finish didn't match the rest of it. David McDonough did a decent strike with the ball as well. Again, he does what Morrow did there two minutes ago. Just cuts right across the ball. Chances coming thick and fast now, but still no breakthrough. It's quite an open ground, the Oval, and architecture has stayed largely the same for the past few decades. You can just imagine this place full 30, 40 years ago for the big derby against Linfield. Yeah, the biggest date in the, in the calendar up here, Boxing Day, usually. All the derbies are played Boxing Day up here. Linfield against Glen Thorn. Everybody wants it to the house for Christmas Day. Long by Coates. Denied that time in the air was Timmy Adamson. Rainey, second best also. Hit long towards Rory Patterson. It's a really good flick. Here's a big chance. McLaughlin trying to get in. What a great challenge by Coates. Ever reliable in the heart of the Crusaders defence. And he was again there and really needed to be. Forward by Morrow. It's a real foot race, this. But Jared Doherty and the Derry goal always had the beatings of Rainey that time. I think if we get a chance to see this again, well, it takes, takes a really bad bounce again. Down at the other end. There's nothing in that. But the ball that was, that was played across, actually the ball checked up. Otherwise Derry would have been in. There wasn't a lot of room for Patterson to manoeuvre. Lehman slipped in past there was space on this near side for McDade a wee bit more concern with Stephen Baxter with the Derry been stronger in the second half of the first half his team started off quite well although they still have created a couple of chances and the best opportunity was the free kick one at a minute at the end of this opening 45 and Stephen Baxter had said immediately after losing the Irish Cup final last week to Linfield, he got all the players round in a huddle. Immediately on the final whistle and said, keep your heads up, we've got one more big game to come. Well, it's always the case, Will. Every time a match finishes, you're preparing for the next game. And he was right to do so. And this Satanta Sports Cup final close to being a sellout. Locations of around 2,000 for each. And, uh, Few neutrals have made their way in also. McDade for Patrick McElhenney. That's a good ball through. They have enough men up. It's a good pullback by McLaughlin. Trying to release Patterson on the far side. And the head out by McBride important. It's probably a final chance of the half will, I would imagine. McElhenney and McBride making their way up as well. Decent ball from Patterson. But McGowan's taking no chances. Central defenders making their way up. Looking to crowd the Crusaders area. There's six up. Waiting this corner to be swung in by McElhenney. Delivery's good, but Coates is up again, and he didn't matter who he bundled over. It was a colleague as he managed to get the ball away. Not a back down again, invitingly by McCaffrey. McLaughlin tried the shot, which was charged down. Higgins in, that's pinball away. Off Cadell. Solid head out by Aiden Watson. 
Malloy, great break. Just needed someone to find in the corner. Yeah, it's a throw. It's just a difficult control in that. The final cost before he was going to pull the trigger was just too far, and Crusaders were able to go out and close him down. The half time words are practically ready to the one and a minute of stoppage time. Stephen Baxter will be the happier to get his team in. The impetus has swung Derry's way. And I do think Derry will get stronger the more the game goes on. You know, all the exertions of last week's cup final and, and a long season in the Irish League is going to take its toll. I'll be surprised if it doesn't. They were in action on the 14th of. July, you'll remember at Seaview against Fulham in the first qualifying round of the Europa League. Gave a really good account of themselves on the night. The strike by Timmy Anderson brought them back into the game, but they're still awaiting their first goal tonight. Goalless at half time in the Satanta Sports Cup final, but it's been open and it's been entertaining. Some good opportunities for both. Higgins shooting wide and uh, when the ball has managed to come through towards David Rainey up front for Crusaders, he has caused big problems for Gerard Doherty. But at half time in the 2012 Satanta Sports Cup final, it's Crusaders nil, Derry City nil. So a goalless opening 45 in the Satanta Sports Cup final. Crusaders and Derry City both seeking their first crown. Crusaders' first All-Ireland final since Manchester United's European Cup winning year 1968. Derry City won a northwest version of this competition, if you like, in 1997. The Irish News Cup likes of Sligo and Finn Harps Institute involved in that. Well, Derry City's fans have uh, travelled across the north in their number, but Crusaders, who generally have a core of at least 1,200, 1,300 home fans at every home game, sold uh, an allocation of 2,000 tickets out for this final. And Stephen Baxter, who's as a player, won two league titles with Crusaders and won the League Cup and the Gold Cup also has won the three major cup competitions in the north with Crusaders, runners up in the league last season. But can they be All-Ireland champions or will it be Declan Devine's Derry? Well, the two men who've linked up front so wonderfully in the opening 45 for Crusaders to get this second half underway and David Rainey and Declan Cadell. And the second half is underway with Crusaders attacking their own fans away to our right hand side and Derry playing into the city goal away to our left where their fans are located. It's been uh, quite a few cup finals ago since I can remember having fans on terraces but on the deck now is Rory Patterson, Coates came right in on him and there'll be a few words I think from Raymond Krangle but will there be a little flash of gold at the end? There won't be. It's a free kick for Derry, and just a free kick. Didn't think there was too much in that, Will. I think, you know, Coates has gone with his left foot, just got him on, on the toes. I mean, it's sore enough, but it's just it's just one of the things, just a fraction late. But uh, the sun has sort of disappeared, Will. It's, the wind's very cold, seems a lot colder, obviously. It's the middle of May, and we both have our winter jackets on. It's not healthy. I think summer's been and gone, really. Patterson will take. That has been uh, generally like this all week, by the way, up north. And just to see the Derry are actually playing into the breeze the second half. Patrick McElhenney sends it in, and it's headed off the crossbar. Well, it looked like it was floating through, but the wind held it up. And now both sides have come tremendously close. They both hit the woodwork. That's where Derry playing the breeze again, the ball. I think Patterson just heads it up in the air, holds up in the breeze. Keeper's almost caught out. Thinks it's going way over the bar. But 
the ball could have went anywhere. It's been comfortably headed away by Stephen McBride, but it was uh, trouble here. Unusual effort. Derry nearly scored. Now Crusaders trying to do the same with Dallas in towards the middle. A really good dummy, magnificent save. The shot by Morrow, Dardy denied. Back in by Adamson, headed out by Madden, and then blasted over the top. Crusaders had three or four great opportunities there. Cadell on the follow through. How did it not go in? What a save from Jared Doherty. Derry were all over the place here from the break. Crusaders were, were quick on their traps from that from that uh, corner piece by Derry. It's a lovely little step over. You expect to, expect that to see the line in the bottom of the corner of the net. But again, it's a decent ball put back in. And Cadell, Derry players rushing, put them under pressure, take his eye off the ball. Unfortunately for the candy stripes, it's just gone over the bar. So Patterson hits the crossbar for Derry. Morrow denied by Doherty's save. Cadell's follow through just over from Crusaders. Electric start to this second half. Patrick McElhenney passed one, tried to get past two, left himself with too much work. Good defending there by Paul Lehman, showing all his experience. Not in the line, Yabagal Hitty getting past him. We see it here, it's a decent run. The Suma going too easy. And then Lehman gets a hand across, just does enough. But the other end will surprise in the number of Crusaders players who were busting the gut to get to the bottom end. And there wasn't enough desire from some of the dairy lads to get back on side. Or rather go outside, I should say. Well, the temperature is going down in Belfast, but on the pitch, it's rocketing up. It's just suddenly got very, very cold here. Jared Doherty, we're going to see, take this kick across the pitch. You know, he was in the right place. Although I think Chris Morrow will be thinking he should have either side of the goalkeeper. It looked like a certain goal. Crowd just shy of 4,000 for this Atlanta Sports Cup final as Cadell makes the charge up. Doherty touches it out. Round 3,600 here. For this showpiece occasion. Morrow. Super season for Chris Morrow. And clean sheets as an emergency goalkeeper last season against Cole Ryan after Niall Murphy was sent off and against Newry City after uh, next uh, substitute keeper Kerrins had to be stretched off the field. So he has played literally just about everywhere. Cross by Watson, forward by Coates. Rainey up, tried to get a touch and he did. Cadell's there and Adamson too. And very well headed away. So Malloy made his way back. This pleasure from uh, Roy Patterson in the middle as the ball wasn't played down the middle to him. He was largely unmarked. Terry's priority, first of all, was to get it clear. Deloy hit long. Patterson with some work to do, but he might just get there ahead of Lehman. Derry have the throw. Good work in that four corner by Rory Patterson. He had to get out of the way to stay on side. It's at the expense of the goal kick. I think David McDavid better trying to, to play that in first time. Trying to be a, bit, a wee bit too clever. But you could, you could see that race with Patterson and Lehman. I would have thought that Derry, at some time today, would maybe have sat somebody on Lehman. You know, he is, he's never never been the quickest, even in his prime, Paul Lehman. And it's something I think they could have exploited today. And they haven't really done it. Mind you, the ball's going to hold up a wee bit more in the second half. And you might find that that ball might be on more often than not. On by Coates. Delivery was decent. Rainey. by Cadell. Get it back to Coates to spread it long. Well, down went McGowan, but there was no whistle for the challenge from McLaughlin. Oh, 
Coates again with the mopping up job and Paul Lehman down the wing. Adamson with the crisp touch, but well cut out by Dunbar McCaffrey, the recent signing from Dungannon Swifts, who played for the Swifts in this competition in its early days. Barry Malloy sent long by the Derry City captain. Place of Kevin Deary, who's sitting in the stand today, out injured due to that kneecap trouble, which probably will have him out for a few months. I reckon maybe three months will. Just on the back of what's happened to Stuart Grayson this year, you know, it's a big blow for for Declan Devine and Paul Higgerty. The game was getting very stretched. Well, you know, very early in the second half, very stretched indeed. There's a lot of space out there. Knee injury for Stuart Grayson. Mark Farron also out with hamstring trouble. I think most people felt for Derry to be a force this year that we had to have the best 11 on the pitch more often than not, and it hasn't been the case. Solid break, looking for Rainey again, but he just got in a bit too heavily on McBride that time giving Derry City the free kick as they were moving their way up. David Rainey didn't have to make this. That's a challenge area that uh, Rory Patterson's not too happy about. And this is the one here. Don't think there's too much in that. If Brian McBride was always going to clear it. Linesman standing five yards away, doesn't flag again. Third cup final of the season for these Crusaders fans. A season which started back in the middle of July last year in the Europa League against Martin Yol's Fulham. And they absolutely packed Seaview that night. Good ball out, McElhenney couldn't get the shot away. Cleared by Watson, it's a throw for Derry. They're putting the pressure on again. Actually, Derry's best moments today have been actually when McDade and McElhenney have linked up. Free kick out, Will. Nick Alliance given this for short pulling. Well, he's a good old fashioned hard tackler in the centre of defence for Crusaders, Colin Coates. There's never any prisoners taken. I mean, how can you give that? I mean, the first foul there was actually Colin Coates just pulling McAlinney back to start with. It's a quality battle between the two as the glance between McAlinney and Coates shows. Contest to relish so far. How is it still nil nil? Long for Patterson, but uh, another good, solid quality cut out by Lehman. McGowan couldn't keep it in on this near side. Nineteen ninety seven, when he was the footballer of the year, and in the past twelve months, Crusaders have earned two more. During the week, he runs a sports shop in Newton Ards, and when I popped in there yesterday, an awful lot of Linfield shirts on sale. Stephen Baxter's been involved in that business for a long time now, Will. I found McCaffrey. It's almost 20 years, actually, he's had the sports shop, which is uh, a good sideline. Here goes Rainey. Good ball. Well, he tested Doherty on the turn. The angle was getting more and more acute as it wore on. Good opening for Crusaders. It's actually a lovely ball. Lovely ball from Watson. And the bounce is nice for Rainey. He just doesn't really connect. And I think Ryan McBride's the slightest of touches on that ball. They kill the pace of it. Morrow. Did really well, and there's a big opening down this side. Chance for McBride to get it in. It's a really good challenge, though, to deny. One McBride denying the other. Ryan McBride is stopping Stephen McBride of Crusaders in his tracks. And Crusaders have the corner kick. Their first on that side in this second half. It's actually a decent block. It's actually Simon Mann. Mann will has done well to, to block that. Well, they've set seven up in the middle, and the knot down by Lehman was good. They've kept everybody up, anticipating the cross from Morrow here. It's been a quality season for him, but 
That ball wasn't up to the same standard. It's Derry on the break. McLaughlin's been brought down by Stephen McBride. Yellow card has been brought out and will shortly be brandished. And Raymond Crangle has got his man. That's one so of too did McBride. Sorry, well, it's one of those where it's not the worst free kick to give away. Derry were on the break. He feels they're going to be threatened. The back four is going to be gathered. And he decides to bring McLaughlin down. But it's a follow on the summer pattern in the first half where Crusaders have actually started the second half better. Well, Higgins played it forward, but O'Neill made the claim. I think he's actually heard Paul Lehman in the process. There was another moment where the claim had to come, irrespective of who was in the way. Sean O'Neill, who's been selected by David Jeffrey as one of his two goalkeepers for the clash with Manchester United at Windsor Park on Tuesday night. United have said they'll send as full a squad as they can, but not sure they'll be in the happiest frame of mind unless something amazing happens this weekend. Lehman's back up. He's won his fair share of silverware. Just been unlucky in Dallas. It's just the pace of the ball that beat him. Ball's always going to run away from you this half with the wind behind you. a couple of former Derry City players involved in that game on Tuesday. I think Harry wanted a couple of Derry players involved in the match. Peter Hutton and Sean Horgan, who's here today, they're going to represent Derry in that game. That's right, Martin O'Neill involved in the selection of the Irish League panel also, along with David Jeffrey. Most clubs across the top flight are represented, including the two Four Crusaders who've helped light up their season. That's a super long ball forward, and Rainey is offside. It won't count. Flag is up. It hit the post anyway. But the flag was very, very early on the near side from Andrew Neeson. Well, I actually think Cadell's actually onside when this ball is played. And either, either Cadell or Rainey had gotten that ball. Flick on by McLaughlin. Hence again by Lehman. And the long balls are working here. Rainey inside for Crusaders, good challenge by Malloy, and that's going to be a corner kick for Crusaders, who finally gained their early momentum back. Yeah, that's the way they started the first half, Will. This is a chance here, I think. I'm not too sure whether Rainey was onside, but Cadell, as we see in our picture there, was definitely onside. But Derry held too high a line. It was too high a line, there was too much grass in behind when Crusaders had good possession of the ball. Stuart Dallas will take the corner kick, it's an outswinger. Oh, what an effort off the crossbar from Morrow. And the hand of Darty was up too. Dallas has sent it back in. Great opportunity for Cadell. It's another corner kick. Crusaders could have had the opener. Yeah, terrific play from Crusaders. I think it's Adamson with a free header. Probably should have scored. Should have scored, wasn't really picked up. And that's, I think it's Cadell with the second header and takes a flick off Barry Malloy, I think, for this corner. Which has been floated long. But this time it's a goal kick. Second time they've hit the woodwork. First it was Morrow, then it was Adamson. Third time that we've come close to a goal, but still no breakthrough in this really observing cup final. Adamson should really have scored there, Will. Headed down across, headed back where it come from, and he's headed straight up against the bar. Not much room in the main stand at the Oval today. We'll be seeing on Morrison shortly. The first change of the game will be made by Derry. Ryan McBride being put under pressure from Cadell there. Sarah Darcy had a trophy laden spell during his time in Wales with the New Saints. League Cup last season, and the first division title since his arrival back into Ireland. He is from Derry, former Ireland under 18. Here goes Higgins sent forward. 
And for Patterson, lovely delivery. McDade on the turn, he's got lots of support. Sends it towards the middle, great chance for McLaughlin. Off balance and flicked away, but Derry's big opening, big chance, not taken. Yeah, really good play. Once again, it's Damien McDade who's involved. He might actually be getting the hook shortly. And uh, unfortunately, it's actually, I think it's, it's McGowan who does really well to do enough to put Stephen McLaughlin off. It was his last touch of the game. Stephen McLaughlin is being withdrawn, and Owen Morrison recently re-signed from FC New York, where Don O'Reilly has been doing business. The, I think it's the NASL, which is a division just below the Major League Soccer. Morrison back in the big time in Ireland and back in a big domestic cup final. He replaces McLaughlin. Very strange substitution. I know young McLaughlin hasn't been at it recently. Well, look at that. You can see where his reaction there. Not happy at all. It's desolation that his cup final is over. Well, cup competitions generally these days, no matter what the country get maligned, but you tell me this occasion isn't important to someone like him. Flag is stayed down, Rainey's through, pretty much on his own. Has support in the middle and he went for it himself and Dartley pulled off the save with Dallas arriving in the middle. Yeah, poor finish. Shane McElhinney, his defender was very poor there. He was too lazy. Instead of following the run, he tried to stay up, step up and play offside. Again, Jared Doherty shows, shows Rainey where to put it. An almost plays cardology with him. Tries to kid him into going to the far side. But poor, poor effort. Adamson's made the break from deep, but Darcy will get there first. Nil-nil it may be, but it's definitely not a nil-nil kind of game. And of opportunities both sides have had. They've constantly pushed and probed. Crossbar's been clipped three times now in the game. Morrison. Rory Higgins. Cross for Ryan McBride. out by Rainey though there's nobody outfield for Crusaders in the Derry City half you know, they're quite ha happy to let Derry have possession in the middle third of the pitch well they'd everybody back and they managed to nick it off Simon Madden controlled by Cadell support Rainey on the left hand side and Adamson on the right Morrow. Stephen McBride. Aidan Watson has had his creative moments in the middle, but I doubt there's going to be enough pace for Stephen McBride to get to this one. Well, still 65 minutes without a goal, and we've been saying for 65 minutes, surely there's been a goal on the way, the amount of chances there have been. Well, it hasn't been, as you just said there, well, it, it hasn't been a nil-nil, you know, boring kind of game where you say it definitely needs a goal. There's been enough happening out there. The one thing that has surprised me is that, is that Derry in the last five minutes or so looked very lacklustre, you know, very flat. Dallas. Which, you know, which was the case last week in, in, uh, in the Pats game. Pushed the ball back wonderfully, and Dallas has got big support here. Wonderful play. Morrow, chance for Timmy Adamson. Followed it up, Morrow came through, and there was a shout which Morrow now acknowledges he didn't hear on this near side from McGowan, who was in space. But instead it was only the Derry City goalkeeper who was found. You know, Derry need to get you know, some kind of passing going. We're under pressure there for four or five minutes, a couple of set pieces, this could be it. Maybe it'll come from Simon Madden, so creative against Linfield in the quarterfinals. It was deep for Patterson. Neyman got the head out, and it'll be all completed by the Footballer of the Year. Chris Morrow trying to bring it away. Rainey consistently the chief target down the middle, but instead it's Patterson found by McElhinney. Got the pull back, but nobody in yellow in the middle. McGowan cleared it away. Well, both sides continue to knock on the door, and nobody's opened yet. A couple of times.
hands at uh, Rory Pallison. Should have done better in good positions. Madden and the flag is up. It'll be a free kick. Foul given against Rory Patterson. Six goals so far this season. Four in the Satanta Sports Cup. All in the opening round against Lisbon Distillery. It's a nice ball from McAlini. And it was dragged back to nobody. Nobody plenty of time to pick up the pass. Pick was fine, very, very animated in the last couple of minutes. You could see by his reaction there, not happy with a number of things. Well, it's his big chance as a manager, having been number two behind uh, Stephen Kenny for a long time. Two spells at Derry, won at Dunfermline, in which he reached his fair share of cup finals. He's very, very animated at the minute. He's trying to lift his team. He sees that they're flat at this minute in time. There's no buzz about them at all. control back to Coates typical solid defensive job from the Crusaders captain this afternoon this guy on the ball at back now. towards Malloy I will borrow Malloy you know he's been a shadow of the player that he's been in the earlier rounds and the earlier games this year the last couple of weeks he really looks Looks off the pace completely. There's no drive. He might be carrying an injury or whatever. There's been no drive in him at all. Played up towards Patterson. The header looping. The claim by O'Neill. Certainly Derry's form has dipped the past few weeks. Three losses in the last four against Dundalk, Shamrock Rovers and St. Pat's with the draw in the league against Rovers also. Haven't won since their 3-0 away win in Tallet in the first leg of the semi-final. Derry free kick against the man who ended up down, Aidan Watson. It's a good opportunity for Derry, they were in there. Rory Higgins actually played the ball, with it was been rolling right beside the referee. Well, look at Declan Devine on the far side. And a few moments ago, it was almost as if he was doing acrobatics, his arms were waving so much. His team are flat, Will. They are flat at this moment in time. Well, he's got the support teed up anyway, on the far flank. And it was out as Cadell attempted to keep it in play. Now, I've said this many times, Will, Derry are always at their best when there's a seriously high tempo. They're very, very fit guys. And they will work you into the ground. They'll overpow you at times, as Linfield found out at, at Windsor Park in the second half, the second half at, at the Brandywell as well. They were just too strong for Linfield. But they look very, very flat at this minute in time. Well, Morrison was caught by Cadell, which has given Derry City this free kick. Now, Cadell's a competitor, Will. You know, him and Morrow were a good, decent pair. Only being Crusaders second season in this competition, but they've held their reputation up very well. It was that uh, incredible 6-4 thriller that saw them bow out last season at the hands of Cliftonville. And all the way to the final this year, and it's... Match number 57 of the season for them. It's the last one. Build up to this cup final a uh, lot different to last week's. Lot softer roll in plan today by Stephen Baxter, but they'll meet in their local hotel post match. And then it's away for four weeks or five. And then the pre season training begins with the Europa League underway on the 5th of July. Crusaders are in it. Hope they get someone good. Forward by Lehman. 
Rainey on the chase, but it should be Shane McElhenney's to win. It's not, though. Adamson has three targets arriving in the middle, and Adamson curled it. Just beyond the post in the end of Gerard Doherty, but it was a good opportunity for Crusaders. Against per play from Rory Pallison, gets robbed of the ball, centre midfield. Shane McElhenney goes on the run with David Rainey, doesn't deal with it properly. And that one there is just a wee bit too close for comfort. Well, the last football game I commentated on at this stage of the game was 8-0. Eight goals less at the moment here at the moment. It's been... Superb contest. Extra time and penalties if required today, worth reminding it. Malloy hit it long in search of Patterson, but he stretched. Just about sums up his day, Will. It just about sums up his day, I have to say. Is it one of those days? But there's a guy, the one concern, his team were on top with a lot of pressure there for 10, 50 minutes. And that's the time you need to, you know, put it to bed. That's when you need to score the goals. Hit the crossbar and the bar, you know, the post, I think, earlier today. You could be thinking it's going to be one of those days, which is quite, quite often happens in cup finals. Nice words from Romano. Scored a cup final winning goal, which is commemorated by a big banner over in the far side. Yeah, the week before, Dave Barry had a great opportunity, a uh, great effort from Cork, hit the post, and back into the arms of Tim Dalton, Derry goalkeeper. And we got a replay and managed to win it. And it's on such narrow margins that that, which cup finals uh, won and lost. Wise words from the Cairn House Director of Football. X. Sorry, former. Yeah, I played in the cup final here against Linfield. Well, we were one up with 12 minutes to go and, and lost 2-1 a penalty with, uh, I think, two, two, three minutes to go. Lost a penalty at, uh, at Windsor Park, four minutes in the injury time. A freak goal by Paul Miller off Glen Thorne. Yeah, so nothing, nothing surprises me in football, I'll tell you. Well, Paul Miller had his go at being Glen Thorne manager here in recent seasons. Eddie Patterson taking up that job, the former Cliftonville boss lately. And he, one of many interested football people here today. Jim Boyce, the FIFA vice president here, as mentioned. Michael O'Neill, also the Northern Ireland manager after that wonderful spell in charge of Shamrock Rovers, getting them into the Europa League. Here goes Rainey! Oh, that's a really good try! And a super one-handed save by Doherty. Out of nothing, Rainey close to the deadlock breaker. Yeah, really good play from David Rainey. The same area has been a revelation for Crusaders. You can see he's still got an appetite and a hunger that one or two other younger players should be learning from. You can see he's only one thing in his mind once he gets this onto his left leg. And he tests George. Jared Doherty, I think this was just going to dip under the bar. And a decent save. Dallas hit it long. And it fell. Coates had the opportunity, but it was Lehman who stuck a foot out and put it off target. Yeah, you can just see the, the Crusaders bench. As I say, saying, well, they've got so many chances. Could be one of those days. It just drops nicely here. It just won't come down. Won't go down quick enough. Seven goal-scoring attempts in this second half alone for Crusaders. Ten in the game. Derry have had two in the second half, including the one that came off the bar from Patterson. Wide from McGowan. At first, it was teasing and tempting, but then it was just tortured. Again, well, Crusaders look the stronger side. Look the stronger side. This look, looks like there's more on their legs at this minute in time. They're getting about the pitch more. They're playing at a higher tempo than Derry are. And Derry's strength is the tempo they play at. Goal kick. Adamson was waiting in and touched it out. Raymond Crangle was pretty much there. 
I think we're full of a corner. I think he's got this wrong, Will, from where standing here. It looked like Ryan McBride's got the final touch here. Yep. And that's because he did. He's glowing a bit at the minute, isn't he? It's like a lot of them out there working their socks off, the cruise players. Well, if you add in friendlies since the second last week of June last year, it's 63 ties for Crusaders. That's with a lot of the traditional competitions no longer around. By the way, Shane McElhenney is down. Used to be a lot more games played in the season with the, the Gold Cup and the Ulster Cup. Floodlink Cup also. But Shane McElhenney is back up, and I'm sure happy that he's not consigned to history like those old competitions have been. But you're not going to get too much time when the likes of Cadell, you know, and Morrow were about. They're going to close you down as quick as possible. There, it's one of those. You end up with a sore foot for for a day or two. Way by Rory Higgins upfield for Derry, but. Brought out by Aidan Watson. Dozen minutes to go. Only once before we've reached 90 minutes and it's been goalless, which was the 2006 final between Drod and Cork City. Good work by Morrow. Chance to play it out wide and McBride needed something a lot better. They were positioned around the penalty spot where Adamson and Rainey. McBride's actually complaining tomorrow that they should have played on the ball earlier. It's one of those when you've wasted the opportunity like that. You, you should have done better there, Will. Morrow maybe should have given the ball a bit earlier, OK, but he still had plenty of time to find somebody in the box. Well, they're a splendid occasion. Maybe the landlords of this stadium will be back in the Satanta Cup final shortly under Eddie Patterson. Finished down the table, round about sixth place. Crusaders in fifth with Linfield top of the pile for 51st time. Patterson. And there was a whistle heard, but it didn't come from Raymond Krangle, and it's a yellow ball. Minutes to go, nil nil. Dermot McCaffrey. Quality ball in towards the middle opportunity. Play through by Morrison and it's into the back of the net by Patterson. The man who lit up Northern Ireland with Colrain and Glenn Torn all those years ago puts Derry City in front in his first game back at the oval. Ten minutes remaining. Derry City have well, he's at an absolute terrible time out there tonight, Will, but that has all changed. We spoke before the match. It's actually a terrific play. I think it's Sean McElhinney, and that's a great finish. We've seen Patterson do that so many times. Very, very temperamental. John Mark, is it Morrison, picks him out. Yeah, really decent ball, sets it in the plate, and, and he doesn't half finish that. But that's Patterson for you times. Could be very, very poor, and all of a sudden, he pops up at the right time. A cool head needed for finish, and he sticks out of the way. He's Derry City's very own Falcao. The man for the big occasion. His seventh goal of the season. His fifth in this season, Satanta Sports Cup. His sixth all-time in the history of All-Ireland competition. Now it's changed. One of those, well, as I was saying, sometimes in cup finals, it's just your day. It's a corner for Cruz. Well, they're putting the tempo back in as they attempt to get an equaliser at the George Best Airport end. And they've sent practically everybody up. There's only two outfield players who haven't made it, and they put very little pressure under Gerard Doherty in the Derry City goal. Yeah, really good hands from Gerard Doherty here. It's under pressure as well, coming in between bodies. Always difficult for goalkeepers, and he made that look easy the drone you can hear it's a 
UK bound play. Making his way from the airport, just taken off. And Derry have taken flight too at the right time. Eight minutes remaining, and they are in front. And they, like Crusaders up north, have had a really good knack at claiming cup competitions. Both sides last won their respective league titles in 1997. It's a Polish city which will be a big focus in the next few weeks and Derry City are doing it. Owen Morrison is down, it's a third yellow card for Crusaders. Silly challenge from Chris Morrow here. Morrow has stepped in on Morrison there. And the easier decision to referee, but this is just because the frustration of the occasion just happened going behind, haven't been the better side. And it just takes Owen Morrison out. But John Morrison showed good feet and good composure for the goal. Now got it into him, kept it in, and picked the right pass at the right time. Seven minutes for Derry to hang on, seven minutes for Crusaders to get back and equalised and force the game to extra time. Had been an open game before, but now even more so. Game's getting very stretched. McDade moving forward for Derry here. Touched back by Coates to O'Neill. Dallas just cut out by the Cadell not on. And it will be a Derry throw. Ten minutes remaining and the breakthrough. Now this is the goal. Good feet into Young Morrison. Picks a lovely pass out. And great finish. There's only one re place that Patterson can really put that. And he didn't half smack it in the corner. But two players of very, very temperamental characters. Morrison and, uh, and Patterson. But they do have quality at times. And sometimes that can be the difference between winning and losing. One bit of magic on the pitch. That ball from Morrison, you know, it was his first touch that kept the ball. And he played the perfect pass in for, for Patterson. Cup finals are passionate occasions, and he was always like this as a number two. Free kick in a very, very prominent position for Crusaders here. As Derry looked to short the defence, Crusaders will be making a change very shortly. As they're on the attack. Dallas with the free kick on this near side. Keeper came, was bought, falls in the net, it's coach, and the goal's been given. It's 1 1, five minutes to go. Goalkeeper Doherty is down, but Crusaders are up. 1 1, and we're heading for extra time. Derry appealing heavily. They're speaking to the linesman on this near side, Andrew Neeson. Well, Jared he comes a long way for this well. Yeah, I think David Rainey's done him there. I think David Rainey's done him here. You know, there, he's taken him out. Now, whether he's done that on purpose or not, I'm not sure. But nine times out of ten, that would be a free kick. Nine well, times out of ten, that would be a free kick. Well, isn't Colin Coates just the man for the big cup occasion? Goals in the semi-final to beat Sligo and then to Nets against Linfield in the Irish Cup final last week. Andrew Neeson, the assistant, who's awarded the goal for Colin Coates. With five minutes to go, Crusaders won, Derry City won. What's the goalkeeper here? That's a free kick, Rainey well. had his back to it, and there was a big collision, and Coates was the main beneficiary. We often say to the players, make it as difficult as you can for the goalkeeper. Stop the goalkeeper getting the ball. And David Rainey... You know, 36 years of age, very clever, cute player, and he's turned, he's turned sideways into him. It's a free kick. 
but it was very difficult for, for the officials to spot that because a lot of bodies there. I mean, Jared already knows he's been taken out, but that's that's always the fine lines we talk about. And no sooner do Derry take the lead, but Crusaders equalise. There will be further animation, no doubt, not just from Declan Devine, but Stephen Baxter. It's the red and black flags flying more lustily now. Five minutes to go. Extra time is now furiously beginning to beckon. The one thing you would say in all of this, Will, Colin Coase didn't have the spots. The chance here, Will. It's a big opening. Oh, just wide. Rainey. Big opportunity. Crusaders broke from the kickoff and could have won this cup tie in the space of a minute. Again, too often today, well, the ball's been knocked over the back four. Cadell, as usual, has been making those runs all day. Lovely pull back. The only thing for Rainey, but disappointed, didn't hit the target across the goal. I think it was Crusaders going to lift the trophy. Well, David Rainey, with 20 goals this season, set up so wonderfully by Declan Cadell. And now, suddenly, it's looking like extra innings. For a split second, it was looking like the main course for Crusaders. Adamson went down, but no free kick. Not a down by Coates. Well, such a sterling performance by him against Sligo in the second leg, and his goal got Crusaders back into the cup final at Windsor last week against Linfield. And he's done the same again today. But wait, Patterson is up there, and he's past the goalkeeper, and the challenge came from Lehman, and that's been given to Crusaders. Patterson can't believe it, and oh. Patterson had been yellow carded, and now he's bumped in. He's getting sent off, Will. And I think there's a second yellow card has been shown. Certainly there was one, but was that just part of the one action by Raymond Krangle? The referee looked as if he was reaching for his back pocket again, Will. Patterson has been booked for his reaction, and the yellow card went up again, but perhaps just as a second wave. We'll have three added minutes, by the way, at the end of the 90 in what is now an ultra-dramatic cup final. I'd like to see this again, Will. Somehow, I think you will. Rory Patterson has been yellow-carded for that. He felt it should have been a penalty. There was a case either way. Picked up by Rainey here. Cut out by Malloy, and that is a Derry ball. The 90 minutes are up, and we are into three minutes of added time. That goal goes back to the goal there. Well, Barney Malloy is having a go with David Rainey. You see with the one that fouled Jared Doherty. Patrick McElhenney's hit it long in towards Patterson, but out in the air strongly. Put on by Lehman. Great experience to be able to bring on one of those two changes for this cup final by Stephen Baxter. On by Morrison. Good ball. Patterson claims trying to cut inside, taking on Lehman down again. Told to get up by referee Raymond Crangle. And demonstrating that is shirt was being stretched after his continuing off the ball as Crusaders look to push forward. It certainly hasn't been dull, Will, has it? Cup finals rarely are. There's always some incessant drama along the way. It's been a cup final, good, superb cup final all the way through, but now it's all happening. Patterson is down. It's yellow and it's red. McBride has been sent off for his second yellow card. And Crusaders are down to 10 men with extra time surely coming. 
Well, that's what happens with the occasion. Well, it's all hurly burly. There's one or two incidents going about. You know, the controversy surrounding the goal. And Stephen McBride loses the head. He goes for a challenge he doesn't need to go for. And he pays the ultimate price. You know, there, when you've been booked, why would you do that? Stephen Baxter's doing his best in the background. But I mean, it's an obvious foul. An easy decision for the referee. But that's where you've got to keep your head, Will. You've got to keep your head at all times. Absolutely extraordinary. And now Stephen Baxter has the plan, presumably for extra time, a key defender short. And his two preferred fullbacks are now not on the field. It's a long walk into the dressing rooms all the way for Stephen McBride. Walking underneath the Crusaders fans in this main stand, his cup final is over. Well, it looks like Gareth McKeown, who plays right back, has been told to get to get warmed up and get ready. Can Derry capitalise before the end? Can Crusaders? Cadell tried to bring it on. All the way back by Morrison for Malloy. Sent forward by Morrow. And he's got support out wide here. Rainey's in a good position, but it was a heavy first touch. And cut out by McElhenney. Rainey again moving in. Waiting in the middle was Cadell. But it's McBride who got in the way. All eyes now on Raymond Krangle as to when the whistle's going to go. It will be added time to the three minutes for the red card, there's no doubting that. 1-1 one, one. after 90 minutes, Colin Coates tying it up with five minutes to go after Rory Patterson had put Derry City in front with ten minutes remaining with what looked like the winning goal. It hasn't been, and for the first time since this day in 2007, the Satana Sports Cup final goes to extra time. Crusaders won, Derry City won, extra time will follow. What a final, and it's not over yet. For the first time since 2007, May the 12th, 2007, we go to extra time in the Satanta Sports Cup final. And that decider five years ago was played in Belfast with the Belfast Club Linfield being beaten on penalties by Drogheda. It's a final which really has taken off now. And as that, that plane that's in Tenoria, I think the pilot wanted to see a bit of the game. Gareth McKeown has replaced Timmy Adamson to shore up the defence following the sending off of Stephen McBride. Adamson, the fine attacking midfielder as he is today, being sacrificed in order that Crusaders have a full-back four again. And it's unfortunate for him because it's Potluck who goes in a situation like that. I thought that Paul Eman might have been, might have been the one to go off. It looks as if he's been labouring the last 15, 20 minutes. Looks as if he's limping in the centre circle as we speak. The one thing we haven't talked about, well, there are a number of yellow cards out there at this minute in time. You know, a lot of players out there have got to be very careful. Gowan has taken his time. It fell invitingly towards Morrow, but it'll be brought away here. Dade came back and he's... Found a way past Morrow very well. No further division of the two, and we go two penalties. Malloy. Good ball out wide towards McCaffrey. Coates with the solid head away, and it was threatening to thread towards the halfway line. It's being brought on here towards Madden. There's only two waiting in the middle, and it was slipped away by the new arrival, Gareth McKeown, his fourth season at the club. He was a cup winner in his very first campaign at Cruz. And in his four seasons he's been here, he's won trophies in three of those, including this one when they won the League Cup by dispatching Cole Rain by a goal to nil. Well, I'm glad to see John McKeown's actually got his hairstyle back. I mean, last week I think he had some kind of Mohican thing going on with, 
I think he was trying to turn it red, and it, it, it actually turned pink. Well, this young lad who he brought onto the field with him, as all the players did pre-match, had a uh, similar kind of Mohican. And there is a ball boy down here with a kind of hairstyle. I wonder if it's a, if it is McKeown Jr. who's here. Well, I'll tell you, that kid below us, his looks better than, than McKeown's did last week. And his performance reflected it, to be fair. I'm not surprised he, he was taken off at halftime and did start today. Sales very poor. red hair dye in North Belfast have done considerably well in recent weeks. Gowan got the touch away, who was normally the first choice right back today. With McKeown not starting, but fit enough to play the final half hour. And apart from the injured Jordan Owens, it is the same 11 that started this cup final for Crusaders that finished last week. Nice. Need Rainey on his own up front. 4-3-1. Actually, it couldn't be. It'll be 4-4-1 will be the formation for Crusaders now. Yeah. Rainey's up front in the zone. Showed good play. They actually played, played a 1-2. And he was actually in, but the ball wasn't played in behind Ryan McBride. I have to say, David Rainey's in great nick for a guy of 36 years of age. I feel like it. Actually, haven't been many yellow cards in this game. Only five players cautioned. McBride picked up two yellow cards. Steve McBride for Crusaders. Had a few battles with his namesake in this game, Ryan McBride. Super Bowl forward, Cadell straight through, onside and denied. It's a corner kick, and the tackle came at just the right time from Ryan McBride. Yeah, it's a great last this tackle from Ryan McBride. But Cadell made a run, and the Derry back four saw him making the run from 10 yards away. It didn't go with him there. You know, that's really, really poor play. It's Rory Higgins that ends up being caught, but Simon Madden didn't track the run either. You know, it's a great challenge by Ryan McBride. Great challenge with the wrong foot as well, coming in with the left foot as opposed to the right. Well, what is it about Derry City and Cup Finals? Rarely dull. That seven-goal thriller against St. Patrick's Athletic in the 2006 FEI Cup Final. Stephen Kenny almost doing two jobs simultaneously between Derry and Dunfermline. Reached two cup finals with Dunfermline the following season. Best of luck, by the way, to uh, Pat Fenlon. Uh, next weekend. Tim's take on Hearts in the All Edinburgh Scottish Cup final. Five waiting for it in the middle. Coates went up again and Coates has scored! His second of the game! He's the go-to guy in the cup for Crusaders this year. His fourth goal in three cup ties. The captain has done the captain's job and Crusaders lead again in extra time. Well, I always felt we're down to 10 men, the Crusaders' best, best opportunities were going to come from the set pieces. This guy's been magnificent in the air all day. Particularly the back, he's almost headed, everything has been like a magnet. The ball, the corners comes in, it's right on the money. You can see that Jared Dorney's probably should have come and punched that. And he's tried to catch it, and it's a bad decision he's made. He should have come and punched that. And you actually see where his hands are there. You know, the ball's at head height. If you're going to come out there and come in amongst bodies, you've got to make sure and get the body. You shouldn't be trying to be catching it there, you've got to punch it clear. What a recent record for Colin Coates. A header to put Crusaders in front in the Satanta Sports Cup final. It's his 13th goal of the season, his sixth in cup competition. And Crusaders are making a change at the end. David Rainey has been brought off, and this is Matthew Snoddy a Linfield fan as he was growing up, who was used heavily in promotion for the League Cup final here around four or five years ago in his Linfield kit, but now trying to be a cup winner in red and black, as he has been already once this season. But what a record in the cup for Colin Coates. 
13 goals this season is magnificent for a centre back. A bit like shades of Steve Bruce when Manchester United won the Cup Winners' Cup all those years ago in Rotterdam. Well, in terms of David Rennie going off, he was instrumental in both Crusaders' goals. The first one I felt was a foul when he fouled the goalkeeper, and I think he was in there being as cute as an old fox as well for the second one, where he was going to make it very, very difficult for the goalkeeper to come and get it. But I do think that Jared Doherty did make this make a mistake in trying to catch the ball. It's in line with Gowan, short from Morrow. But since that goal has gone in, Declan Devine and, and Paul Higgerty have been very much in conversation over there, thinking about maybe changing the formation, how they can utilise the extra man a bit better. Well, Patterson was up, and he's on a final warning. There's quite a clash mid-air with David McGowan. A yellow card from late in the second half. Mm. Well, I think if he hadn't hadn't had a yellow card, well, he was getting one there. Well, Raymond Krangel, I think, has kept a lid in this game very well. Snoddy tried hard to keep that in play, but just lost out. So young and enthusiastic, 18 years old, but who's played in half of Crusaders League games this season. Into Monkstown High School. And he's on the ball here. Snoddy breaking through. And it's a goal kick. Good footballing name, but as we said uh, last time we saw Crusaders, not related to the man who took charge as referee at two World Cups. Alan Snoddy. I think he's in charge of referees up here now. Young Ryan McBride was very, very fortunate there. He injured himself in that last stitch tackle on Cadell, his left foot. And very unusually for him, he's one of those guys, no nonsense defender. He very rarely takes any more than two touches. And he tried to be too clever and nearly paid for it. And as you'll see, Derry will be making another change shortly. Young Ryan Kearns coming on. The emphasis on the word young. Still a current Northern Ireland under-18 international. Snoddy looked as if he was being held back there. But he's so young and so full of running. Well, I think Derry might be thinking of maybe going three at the back or something like that. You know, the young Snoddy's been up front on his own and just go man to man with him. Get other people pushed on, but they've got to be aware of the runs of Goodell and Morrow. Well, it's worked for Napoli. They've made their way to the first Champions League in a long time. And Universidad de Chile won the South American equivalent of the Europa League, winning with three men in the back all season. Derry uh, adapting their pieces on the chessboard as a result now. McDade, very good cut out by Aidan Watson. Sent back in again by McCaffrey. It's inviting, it's pinballing, it's a chance for Patterson. It's a penalty for handball. And in the very first game of the season against Fulham, Crusaders conceded a penalty for handball. And now in game number 57 and the last, it's the same again. It's against Paul Lehman. Yeah. It's a penalty kick. I think the Crusaders players knew the minute that uh, the referee pointed the spot. It's one of those, you could come out with your arms up in the air, you could pay the price. It's Rory Patterson. It's 2-2! Sean O'Neill came very close to keeping it out. But Rory Patterson has done it again. Yeah, you can see the uh, Sean O'Neill is very unhappy with this. Probably feeds he should have saved that. I think he probably should have saved it as well. It's not the best penalty in the world. You know, you want the keeper with strong hands, strong wrists. You should have parried that and put it around the post. It's Colin Coates 2, Rory Patterson 2. Patterson has now scored eight goals this season, six in the Satanta Sports Cup. And he's now on seven goals all time in the competition going to win the golden boot at the end of this. A few 
hoping we might be seeing one or more, one or two more penalties. That prospect has edged a lot closer. McBride was up. It's a free kick for Crusaders here. Yeah, Ryan McDrice got himself involved with young, with young Snoddy. There's one or two words exchanged in the last five minutes or so. Young Snoddy's a live wire. Just Ryan McBride just needs a wee bit, wee bit more composure. They've done well from dead ball so far in this cup final of Crusaders. And Coates is up again. He's on a hat trick. And they've all come from headers at dead balls. Starty did well to get it away back up towards McKeown. So inviting and so unmarked was Paul Lehman. But he couldn't find a way past Doherty to get any extra power on it. See, all the Derry lads were appealing to the, to the linesman. And for that, could have been costly, but the linesman was about five yards behind the play. Good cut out by McGowan, but too long. I think the guy in our pictures there, Will, has been Derry's best player today. Two, two. It could be four all or five all. Chances have been there for that. Mercedes hit the woodwork twice. Derry wants some majestic saves from Jared Doherty. The only mistake he made well, was for the second goal. He probably should have punched it. On by Morrison. Managed to latch back onto it and went down inside the area, but nothing doing that time. Watson away down this near side as we approach half time in extra time. Thank you, Phil Watson, as well. Will, he's done a great job in front of the Crusaders back four as well today. It's been an amazing shift. Dallas got in, got there first ahead of Simon Madden. Always a dangerous man down the wing for Derry City this season, Dundalk last. Two Satanta Cup finals in a row for him. Just last year. What happens in the next 15 minutes plus? Yeah, Simon Martin has been prominent today. Well, there's other games we've seen him in the past. Great credit for that. Must go to Crusaders. Met by the head of Shane McElhenney. the bare one minute of added time at the end of this first period of extra time and the ebb and flow has been terrific and there's been a word said out of turn yeah to Owen Morrison who's just been booked Will always likes to chirp Owen it's, uh, it's never third quiet yellow of the final for Derry City Never quiet when he's around. Him and Patterson between them. Two of them could talk you to death. Consultations continue between Mrs. Devine and Hegarty. It's been fun in the sun at the Oval. And it's not over yet. The first period of extra time is now, and has yielded two more goals with Colin Coates heading Crusaders into the lead six minutes into extra time, but the equaliser came just five short minutes later through Rory Patterson. The drama continues, it's only just intensifying. Magnificent stuff, and no winner decided yet. Half time and extra time. Crusaders to Derry City to and Felix Healy. It's only going to get more intense, don't you know it? Yes, but you actually quoted a line there. I don't know whether you did it on the purpose of a Beats Boys song. And uh, I'm just thinking of another Beats Boys song at this minute in time, Heroes and Villains. And it's that kind of, uh, you know, the last time it, with extra time like this, draw had a Linfield at Windsor Park, it went to penalty, Stuart Byrne scored the winning penalty. And I have a feeling we might see, uh, I think there might be one or two chances. I think Crusaders will get a chance from a set piece. Derry might get one or two chances in the next 10, 15 minutes. But it wouldn't surprise me if this goes to penalties. 
We're only 15 minutes away from spot kicks now. The first period of extra time gave us two goals. Now, I wonder if there's something else on the way. Looks like Eddie McAllen's coming on. I have a feeling it might be for Ryan McBride, who's been limping for quite some time. And you will be absolutely right when that comes to pass. And Maguire waded in on Dave McDade. And here the change is now imminent. And Ryan McBride is being brought off, and Eddie McCallion's being brought on. Well, it's a minute into the second period of extra time that's being done. Why not do it at half time in extra time? It's only a minute. Well, there was an incident with, with Declan Vine actually came onto the pitch and he tried to get the players over at half time to have a, to have a chat, to change one or two things. And the referee was quick off the mark and told him to get off the pitch. He didn't want them on the pitch to have any kind of discussion. You're not allowed to have to come on the pitch at half time and extra time. You've got to have a straight changeover. Morrison, very good, strong block by Lehman. Well, it's such a, a powerful central defensive partnership between Lehman and Coates. As we normally have with Derry when they've uh, a full strength panel, but Lenny and McBride have done a good job today until McBride's departure and Eddie McCallion comes into the back four now. So forward to Matt. McCallion's first touch in this cup final. Five League Cups he's won since 2000. He's now injured for the 2007. Very well won by Patrick McElhenney in ahead of Morrow. Try to keep going. Very good tackle, which might just have cost McGowan dear. He's limping away from that. It will be a a throw for Crusaders here, won by young Matthew Snoddy. Well, it's horses, Bryce and Will. McGowan's actually a good cramp. I think he's struggling to take this through in. Well, he's making his way up as best he can. Made by McDade. Much to aim for up front, just Rory Patterson. As this cup final rumbles on towards 120 minutes. There is a hero yet to be found somewhere around the corner. given us an intense cup final with some tremendous football. Just a thrill to see what's going to happen next. Well, not by uh, Patterson's not back towards O'Neill. He's very animated again, Rory Patterson. He's held that ball on. He's complaining about everybody else around the pitch. I don't know what he expected them to do. Could be a free kick here. Snoddy did well to win the ball. He had a few arms wrapped around him by Shane McElhenney, but Crusaders keep me going through Declan Cadell. He's had some superb opportunities in this game to find the score sheet this afternoon. There will always be moments for any player, well, the managers as well in cup finals. As you get older, those moments keep popping up at times. If only I'd done something else particular time that it'll, it'll those kind of things haunt you in years to come particularly when you lose and young Cadell today he's, he's worked incredibly hard decent decent player but he's had a couple of chances you saying particularly when Crusaders were on top in the second period Sent up by Higgins, lots of space on this near side for Simon Madden. On by McCallion to find him. Last cup final they played and they won Derry. It's Cork City down to Terry's Cross, which was another superb clash, even if it only finished 1-0. It 
Could have had at least six goals in it. This one's had four. Does it end there, though? Maybe not. Madden's in. He's pulled it across goal and might have another opportunity at a cross. It'll be a throw for Derry City. It wasn't going in, but there were a whole queue of yellow shirts ready to sweep in at the back post to try and get the finish. Here goes Madden. Short for Patrick McElhenney. And the temptation must have been there to let fly. And he has done now. And it's a really good punch away by O'Neill. They've still got plenty of men in there, Derry. Back invitingly by Morrison. And still going as McElhenney. And it bounces away off Paul Lehman, who used his experience still in Madden. Out for the goal kick. What really superb probing from Derry City. Well, it's been better play for Derry. They've really stretched Crusaders all over the pitch. Young McElhinney's showing his class here. Good save by Sean O'Neill. Then it comes back out to him. Shows his ability again. We just don't quite see it. It's Stone Morrison who holds it up. And the boss played the back post, but Simon Madden just can't reach it. The number of Crusaders players this minute in time struggling with cramp. The Colin Coates, Dallas. No, Cadell, I think he's going to leave, yeah, leave Declan, the pitch as well. Declan Cadell is being brought off. And it looks like Kieran Gargan, who signed last year from Donegal Celtic for a second spell at the club, will replace him. But what a performance from Declan Cadell and being given the temporary reward that he definitely deserves. But will he get a winner's medal? Yeah, Gargan's going to play on the left. Will uh, Dallas have moved the right hand side? Crusaders are basically playing 4 4 1 3 1. Decent ball through towards Snoddy. He's causing problems for the Derry defence without a doubt. He's got so much running in him. He's been given lots of opportunities by Stephen Baxter as the attempted volley by Madden goes wide. Well, they're both up for this, neither. Looking like they want to take penalties, they want to win it on the pitch. Well, you can see that uh, O'Neill is very unhappy with, with Cargan, who's just come on. He's allowed uh, Simon Madden to go on that run. And Colin Coates came across, blocked at the danger, just did enough to put Simon Madden off. You know, that's Cargan just on the edge of the picture, he didn't track the run. Was on the wrong side of Madden. Well, both sets of fans in rousing mood now. And here goes Snoddy, released by Cargan. What a superb cutout by Madden. Well, I can't recall a game in which he's failed to impress. Crusaders moving it on this near side through Gareth McKeown. Finds Snoddy down the middle this time. Exceptionally key. legs tiring that might be very useful in the final seven minutes of extra time Madden again quality ball sent in by Morrison but it just had to be a bit better various no. shoulders beginning to droop around the pitch the Crusaders obviously looking very very tired team at this minute in time you know Morrow in the center of midfield Dallas in particular they look absolutely shattered Paul Lehman struggling Coates has even got good crump the young fellow who's come on, Cargan, is fresh as a daisy, but it's very difficult sometimes to get it to match when you come on as a sub. And a couple of times he's gone to sleep and Simon Madden's got beyond him. Well, they were knocked out on penalties of the first round of the County Antrim Shield pre-Christmas. More Crusaders. Now Stephen Baxter is to plot who the takers will be. In case it's not won in the next six minutes. You can't really see Crusaders this month in time mounting any kind of attack at all. Well, and it's gathered by Morrow. They have the ball in the final third and it's offside against Matthew Snoddy. They look like a team that needs penalties. Can't come quick enough. I do you think Derry will get an opportunity? 
Strongly won by Rory Higgins, and he has the free kick too. There's so much international talent on the pitch in terms of underage internationals and representative games for the League of Ireland and the Irish League. It's a good cup final all the way through, but it's really gone towards boiling point now, even if the second half of extra time hasn't quite got the same intensity of the first, which was just breathtaking at times. Paul Lehman did really well there when that cross had come in. You know, we got the right side of Rory Patterson, didn't allow him a free header. Callion. Sent on by McElhenney, but too far, just beyond David McDaid. Two cup competitions, Derry City have won in their history. Crusaders have 16. And in their only previous All Ireland Cup final. They finished runners up 44 years ago. Suddenly they've been given a bit of a lift. Madden failed to trap. Crusaders have the throw. But all the and Crusaders Morrow players. barely had the energy to take it. All the Crusaders players are just uh, just calm down. <laughs> just calm down. Four minutes and counting. McKeown will take the throw. Solid ball inside, couldn't quite find Snoddy. Now there could be a break on here for Derek. It's being brought away by McElhenney. Patterson has moved forward and Morrison too. It's a great job done by Young Watson again there, Will. Looks like a little tiger in front of the back four today. Maybe there will be one last chance. Morris, and it won't come this time. Still good running. This is Kieran Gargan, who's got the freshest feet of the lot, having just come on. But the challenge by Higgins, even at this intensive, tiring time of this cup final, was more than superb. Well, that last attempt of a tackle by Rory Higgins had his manager in the far side doing the handstand, I have to say. What a final Colin Coates has had. And if there is definitively the man for the big occasion, he is it. Gareth McKeown with the free kick. Controlled by Snoddy, dived Gargan. So what's it like to score the winning goal in a cup final then? And will we see one here? I think it'll be penalties, Will. Um, score on a goal in a cup final. I was fortunate to score a number of goals in cup finals. And uh, it's amazing the ones you lose. Sometimes I've, I scored three or four in cup finals were actually lost. And you probably think more about them than you did in the ones that you actually won. It's brought through by McElhenney. Derry trying to win this in the final two. Obviously in 89 there was the treble, which, which we won, which is, had never been done before, which had a great significance to it. And it's amazing everything you do, people always talk about that. Good cut out by Gareth McKeown. Here's the one last launch forward by Crusaders in the final 90 seconds. That won't be. One thing you do get well when you score in like a cup final like that is you get it you get an adrenaline rush that's hard to describe. Waited through Higgins and look who came out with it. Colin Coates and Coates is launching the attack here. Adrenaline all the way for him and he's in the middle and he wants it. Morrow's bringing it down the left hand side and Morrow. Couldn't quite get a proper connection behind it. But Coach sailed right through. It will be a Crusaders throw here. He's out and on Coates his feet is well. Up. Morrow's just absolutely shattered. Well, there's going to be quite a lot of limbs being straightened out and massaged. 
ahead of the penalty shootout if it goes that way. It doesn't have to and go into the box here, Will. It's away from it now. It doesn't have to go into the box, it should just give it to Watson. Thrown in long by McKeown. But they crowded the defence. It's penalties for the first time in exactly five years. Drawdy United beat Linfield on this day in a spot kick across town at Windsor Park. Five years ago in the 2007 final, two goals from Colin Coates, two goals from Rory Patterson. It's Crusaders 2, Derry City 2, it's penalties. So, Derry City will take first in the shootout, and the man who scored twice across the 120 minutes, Rory Patterson, the top scorer in the competition this season, facing Sean O'Neill. It's Patterson, it's there! First blood Derry in the shootout, so confidently done by Rory Patterson. Well, it's one of those, this is the double bluff, Will. You know, with the first one in the same corner. Keeper decides to gamble, go the other way. There's more on the corner than the one he took in normal time. And similar to Rory Patterson. Colin Coates, the doubles goal scorer for Crusaders in this cup final, has been entrusted with their first penalty. Well, with the game that he's had, well, you wouldn't want to see him miss this. Coates has been heroic in all cup competitions this season. One more kick for him, and he'll be a step closer to getting his hands on the final trophy of the season. It's Coates. Oh, look at that! The archetypal perfect penalty. It's 1-1. You just don't stop them, Will. Same as the one at Sligo. It's actually a better penalty than one at Sligo. Just put your foot through it, keep the head down. And Jared Dodd has no chance with that. Well, Rory Higgins won this trophy with Bohemians in 2010. He's represented the League of Ireland in key games the last two years. It's a key penalty. And Higgins has got it. It's at the Derry end, and they lead by two goals to one. Rory Higgins. It's actually a good height for a goalkeeper, this one, Will. Just the goalkeeper gambles again, goes too early. I think if the goalkeeper goes to the right, he's going to save that. The Northern Ireland Footballer of the Year. Chris Morrow, his second last game of the season. He plays against Manchester United next Tuesday night and faces Gerard Doherty to try and bring Crusaders level. And Morrow's got it! Doherty got his body down, but couldn't keep it out. All square again, and no, uh, no wonder Morrow is smiling. He got away with that one. Got away with that, not the best penalty in the world, to be honest. Gerard will be really disappointed, he's gone down, but hasn't really kept his eye on the ball. It's gone up over the top. And Time for the captain, Barry Malloy, captain the League of Ireland selection in the Super Cup last season. Malloy scores two to keep alive his chances of getting his hands on the trophy, even if O'Neill managed to get a hand on the ball. Again, the wrists aren't strong enough, Will. It's like the one we saw earlier. Although, to be fair, it's not, it's not the worst penalty in the world. Well struck in the corner. Jared Ord is trying to play all kinds of games with the Crusaders, penalty takers. Well, just look at this. It's the 18-year-old young substitute, Matthew Snoddy, who has volunteered to take the third penalty for Crusaders. And the confidence of youth is seen him through. Wow! I'll tell you what, there was a fair bit of intent even with the run-up. It looked like he was going for the high jump. Absolutely smacks us in the far corner, right in the far corner. What a fine finish by Matthew Snoddy. And now it's the turn of Owen Morrison it's to real try squeak. and follow suit. He has quickie bomb time. Well, as long as he doesn't try to be too clever with this. Well, 
that's a real shocker. Well, I never like people who take a very, very short run up. Well, it was good for Socrates, but not here today. But he's a very, very talented guy, Morrison. Sometimes, you know, you try to be too clever. It's Kieron Gargan. wide has been cancelled out well it's amazing how often they say in penalty shootouts will whoever misses first quite often wins it's good height for the goalkeeper the former Sunderland playmaker Patrick McElhenney comfortably put home and Derry lead again just when it all seemed lost yeah good penalty from Fats you asked me the last time why he's called Fats will Apparently we would have probably fat many, 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 many years ago, I should say. Well, it's been a real soap opera throughout. And here comes Dallas. Last season's Football of the Year, Stuart Dallas must score for Crusaders. And he has so comfortably, so confidently. That was glittering. It's sudden death. And you'll actually see Jared Doherty actually doesn't show you from that. Actually, Jared Doherty's moved so far to his right and showed him the left hand side and he's tried to put him off playing all kinds of games but it didn't work and it goes on well, he played in the competition for so many seasons with Dungan and Swift at Dermot McCaffrey and it's his job to try and put Derry in front again what a save Sean O'Neill. The guy stepping up now, guy. Well, it's on comeback for him after what happened at Windsor last week. Gareth McKeown, last week in the Irish Cup final, had a big streak of red dye across his head. And if he gets this, it'll be victory for the Reds. It's Gareth McKeown. Absolutely outstanding today, scored two great goals, maybe a bit lucky with the first one. But I don't think anybody could have complaints about the result today. I think Derry were flat, particularly in the second half. And I think Crusaders, over the 90 minutes, or over the entire game, with the better side. Well, the presentation committee being led by Milo Corcoran, the head of the Satanta Sports Cup Committee, Jack Grundy of the Irish Football Association, and Colin Morgan, the uh, chief executive of Satanta Sports Television. But Sean O'Neill, such a wonderful performer. Paul Lehman finally wins this competition after being a runner-up four seasons ago with Glenn Torren. Stuart Dallas, such a wonderful penalty to send it to sudden death, and it was the first round of sudden death penalties in which Crusaders won it. Well, Linfield were the very first winners in 2005, and until today, there hadn't been a Northern Ireland winner. Since then, two for Drogheda, one each for Cork City Bohemians and Shamrock Rovers. But the crews from North Belfast have come through this season on this day. Stephen Baxter, the winning manager, walks forth to receive his winner's gold medal and that leaves just one man and in a team of heroes he is the one who is sitting on the shoulder of giants colin coates two goals on the pitch 
a converted penalty. And in the 30th All-Ireland Final, the 7th Satanta Sports Cup Final, it's a winning crusade. The most northern All-Ireland champions ever. Colin Coates has led by example. He's brought this wonderful team with him. And at the end of the second longest final ever, their longest season ever, 57 games, they are the champions of All-Ireland and they've been just brilliant.